Hey kids, welcome back to the desk. Yes, it's a little bit different from the couch. Don't worry, I think I'll intersperse some couch videos in between. Let me know what you guys think if you prefer me to just do them off the table because it's a wider, flatter platform or if you want me to continue to do couch footage. I, I can do both. It's just I've been moving a lot of stuff recently. My couch is covered with crap. Plus, I set up this desk area so I might as well freaking use it. So as you can see, I've got my gun rack right there, a couple of gun lockers, a couple of long guns there that I'm playing with. I think this setup works for this smaller stuff, but let me know what you think. Inside this case we have an HK Heckler and Coke. Also uh, some of the taglines you'll see on Heckler and Coke boxes is no compromise. Unfortunately I watch a YouTube content creator who likes to say no compromise and it throws me off so I have to say it the right way. It's just like those people that say Heckler and Koch. No, it's Heckler and Coke. There you go. But anyways, this one came from Liberty Arms. It's actually on consignment. A guy is selling this one. It's interesting. It's not something I'm going to pick up, but who knows? Maybe one of you guys is looking for this exact pistol, and you may be interested in picking it up. Before we dive into that, let me thank all of you guys, because 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 of you guys. Yep, yeah, that's right. He said it four times. I actually have a couple of sponsors for the channel. I, they will be sponsoring live streams. I do live streams three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Make sure you come and check those out. We have member giveaways and subscriber giveaways so you just kind of kind of jump in wow it's like 2 30 in the morning so i'm mixing a lot of words as they're forming inside the smooth brain in my head and uh, yeah they're just coming out i'm not restarting the video i'm a one take man you get what you get and that's what you get and that's what we're going to give you like the video for that but anywho back to this hk produces many many firearms i will say a lot of them tend to be a little bit overpriced in my opinion however if you buy them on the used market or the consignment market which is what this is in on you can get some pretty decent value so this is the hk vp9 it has the european release we'll take it out of the box here and show it to you first thing we do is drop the mag and show you that it is clear. Set that down for a sign for a second so that I can show you, well, for example, a Glock. So this is a Gen 3 Glock 17, also clear. So the on-shelf price for a Gen 3 Glock 17 right now is $499, mapped price at $499. So basically 500 bucks. You're getting a basic gun, you get two mags, and a basic gun that's decent. Not great, just decent. For 630 bucks, which was the used price or the consignment price that this guy's putting this up on, you get an HK. Now, normally these are about 700 or 750, I believe. So it's a little bit of a discounted price, and I think you'll find that comparatively, I think you'd be better off going with the used gun over a used Glock. But I'll let you decide that at the end of this whole video. But yeah, chambered in 9x19. This is one of two variants of the VP9 that HK produces. HK does produce a version of the HK VP9 that has the regular US style thumb release. I actually prefer the paddle release because it makes the guns fully ambi. And honestly, it's not that hard to just hit it. And if you are ambi, it makes things easier. Ambi slide lock slide release. The only thing that isn't is the takedown lever, but let's face it, if you're taking it down, are you really holding it in a shooting stance? I like the overall design of the VP9. It's essentially very similar to a P30. However, it is striker fired. I know that's a pedantic way of putting it, but it really is. This is basically a striker fired version of a P30. Has interchangeable side straps and back straps, so you get all that in the box. You get their speed loader, and this particular one comes with three mags in total. I like them; they are easy dropout. You can see 15 plus one, for, so a total of 16 rounds. Um, it's interesting that the marks are like that. That is weird. I'm looking at the different mags that it has. Wow, there's a Cali mag for you. I'm not a big fan of these rear seam welded ones, but I mean. The rounds are so high up on it, I guess there isn't a whole lot of compression of the spring. So, And it's HK. They've been around for a long time, and it seems to work. I like these large releases for the slide lock slide release. Those do work really well. They are quite close to the gun because this is a carry-style pistol, a duty-style pistol. has some interesting features. Three-dot sights. Excuse me. These are actually night sights on this one. Um, 
as you can see, they're all the same color. Modern day, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put in a contrasting color up front with either white or blacked out rears, which is what I prefer, but this isn't too bad. Uh, taking a look at the night sights, they do still work, so these are not that old. Uh, HK puts dates on a lot of their guns, so looking at the gun, I'm trying to find the year code on it. I don't see the year code. It might be there 22, uh, 2022. I don't think this is a 2024 gun. But yeah, not too bad. Has a full pick rail underneath so that you can run a light laser bazooka. This is just my Warrior Land light. It just happens to be on my desk. So as you can see, fits on there really easily. Helps if you're securing it on there. But yeah, that's the way it looks when you put a light laser on there. One of the neat features on this gun that I do like is the rear here. You can see it actually has like little ears back here. Makes it easier for people to grab and rack. It is rather stiff, stiffer than a lot of modern guns because this design is like 22 years old, I believe. Yeah, I like how easily that drops out. The grip feels really nice. It has three finger grooves. They happen to be the right cut for me. Uh, if you have smaller hands, they might not fit well. If you have gianter hands, yeah, that's right. He said gianter. If you have gianter hands, they may uh, not fit on there as well. But because of the height from the slide to the frame there you should have no issues even if you happen to be a burger king calorie enhanced individual nice has a extractor that doubles as your loaded chamber indicator you can see there here actually let me put one in there i thought that was easier to push it isn't where's my snap cap grandma where's the snap cap i don't know why don't you go find it because i don't know where it went grandma there it is Load your mag with a snap cap. You should get those. They're inert rounds. They're just made out of aluminum or plastic or aluminum and plastic. And they allow you to do things such as this. So you can see there, you can see just a little bit of red sticking out. Yep, so it, it works. I would not rely on that. Here's an idea. Either press check or just trust that your gun is loaded until it fails on you. But not bad. It actually is... A functional unit but again don't trust it. don't trust your life to a loaded chamber indicator if you're in the middle of a firefight and you're taking time to look down at the side of your gun you've got big issues my friend uh, let's talk about the trigger it has the trigger safety no external manual safety so it has the trigger safety if you don't actually have your finger on it it's not going to go ba bang let's close that up real quick and demonstrate the trigger has some take up and then brakes it's actually really light. I'd say it's at five pounds, if not slightly below. Take up, brake, reset. It's a little gritty, actually. You can actually hear it. Listen to me when I release the trigger. You can hear that plastic in there. Yeah, but you can feel it and hear it, which is good. And the next shot is pretty damn easy. Also, if you noticed, no magazine disconnect. Has a very hard to see striker indicator. I guess if you're holding it out at distance, you can easily see it. But yeah, if you're just like, it's in your holster, I guess it's easy enough to see, but like at the wrong angle, it becomes invisible. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, sir. Just kind of taking a look at the end there. The barrel protrudes a little bit. What that does is it gives you a little bit of standoff ability, but not much. It's still gonna run back. It's actually better if it's crowned, but HK sells lots of parts or HK warehouse or HK parts. They sell like an add-on like for the VP30 or excuse me, the HK P30 that actually gives you a simulated compensator. It's usually open on the top. It's just a weight on the front, but that could become a standoff because it goes onto your pick rail. What do you say we take her apart? Okay, well, first thing you want to do is open her all the way up, lock her to the rear, make sure there's nothing in there. Then you can come here and fiddle with your takedown lever. <gasps> really difficult. And you're going to go ahead, pull your trigger, and take the top off. Very easy, very simple, easy peasy, lemony squeezy. Take your spring out, it is captive, and drop your barrel out. Sometimes you see me struggle a little bit on camera. The reason for that is the fact that I do this live first time every time. Sometimes I have to refilm if I make major screw-ups, 
but if you see me stumbling a little bit more, that's because it's the first time I've taken this apart. This is to show you how easy guns are to work on, how safe they can be if you treat them with the respect they deserve, and all that fun stuff. So like down below if you believe in simplicity and safety. Taking a look inside though, holy shit, I've never actually taken a look at their, their uh, drop safety before. That's a little convoluted. But, you know, it works, so more power to them. But Jesus, Louisa, you definitely need to take that to a gunsmith to replace parts. Unless you're brave enough to do it yourself. If you're brave enough to do it yourself, hey, you know what? More power to you. Yeet the shit out of it. You can see where they cut in to take some material out. These are available optics cut. Obviously, this one is not. Uh, it has your standard, standard uh, tilting locking action. Very nice. You can also replace these for threaded barrels and run suppressors. And the guide rod is just basic. It is plastic, pretty light, not a whole lot of weight to it. Taking a look at the frame, the lock block, and the front springs and everything are very, very, very beefy. I'm actually impressed. This gun obviously has a round count. You can tell from that. Go ahead and wipe that off. Yay, uh, but not bad at all. The canted ejector might throw people off the first time they see that. Most guns have a straight vertical one with a twisted ejector, but uh, yeah, don't be surprised if you see that. There's your sear back there for the release, and there is your firing pin block. The slide lock slide release, actually that's pretty interesting. They operate, okay. So it is kind of going all the way around. This side is the strong side, and this side, as you can see, um, it, it's not as easy to manipulate. Excuse me. It doesn't move as much. Like, I can actually hold this one down while manipulating this one. So this is definitely just a piece of steel wrapped around. I don't know if I like that. I prefer them when they're both directly linked with a little bit shorter piece of metal or a thicker piece of metal. This is actually pretty goddamn cheap. Actually, looking at that, all right, so some of them where the, the ambies are inside, this is just a piece of metal on the outside. So it is what it is. Um, I'm not a fan of that, though, to be honest with you. Overall, though, the build quality is pretty nice. What do you say we put it back together? By the way, too, as I'm doing this, if you hear me saying things that sound like I'm bagging a little bit on the gun, yeah, but you know what? It's an expensive firearm when they're brand new from the factories. I like them to be really good. And I'm also looking them from the perspective of, hey, look, I've never bought this gun before. Would I buy this gun based on its ease of use? Looking at things like the complicated firing pin block and the way things are run internally. For a novice shooter, there's a reason why the Glock 17 is so freaking popular. Because you just have simple takedown, simple internals, no freaking roll pins, all that stuff. So much easier gun to work on. Even though it is a boring, boring, boring block. So for a first-time buyer, would I suggest you buy an HK uh, VP9? No. P30? No. Um, 1911? Sure, if you really want to. But yeah, I, uh, I believe that you should not let the internet tell you exclusively what to do. But uh, just from my shooting experience, which one should you go with? I'm always going to go for the Glock for simplicity reasons. I'm going to go for this because it's a better gun. Being gunsmith trained, I do have the ability to repair my guns. Uh, take that into account when you decide whether or not to drop $600 to $1,000 on a German or Austrian piece. I know this sounds a little bit rambly. I like to do these videos this way. It's not trying to extend for time because 13 minutes is well over. You know, you see the assholes that put out 100 videos a year where they're all 8 minutes in one second. I don't do that shit to you guys. Um, I try to keep it as down to earth as I can, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know. If you like me filming off the butcher block, let me know. I don't mind doing it. If you want me to go back to the couch, I can do that once a week and then use the butcher block for everything else. I think this is the better filming source just because it's an actual goddamn table. And with my tattoos, are you really going to confuse me for somebody else? Yeah, that's about it. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any of the guns you've seen here. MC9, SF, TSOS, Huchka, 1911, PSA Rock. If you got any of the guns you've seen on the table today, let me know because I'm always interested in seeing what you guys have. Come back for some live streams Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays beginning at 7, 7 p.m. Eastern, and we'll just have some fun. I love you guys. Thanks for coming back for this one, and as always, I'll talk to you later.